With Roman Reigns unifying the WWE and the Universal Championships, there are many people out there who feel that they need to be separated. That way, more people would get the opportunity to hold a world title within WWE. But this begs the question, what if we went back in time to the original brand split? Who might have been shortchanged if there was only one world title belt within WWE? Well, fortunately, that exact question is the topic of this episode. Because today... Alright, so if this kind of question intrigues you and you like thinking of wrestling from a different point of view, then I suggest please consider subscribing because this is the Thinking Fans channel. And if you would like to further support me, please go over and sign up on my Patreon page. Just like... Thank you so much for the support over on Patreon, Dakari Garmin. Thank you so much to all my Patreon supporters for the help. Alright, so not too long ago, I made a video all about what if WWE just had one world title belt. However, that mostly focused on the current brand split. But what about the original? As this is a list, taking a look at some of the wrestlers that held either the WWE title or the world title anywhere between 2002 and 2013 when the first brand split officially ended. And out of all the wrestlers to do so, I personally selected 10 that I'm not too sure would have done so if there was just one belt to speak of in WWE. And now, with that being said, hey, let's just go ahead and get into it. Personally, I've never been a big fan of Booker T being used as a comedic act. I don't like that supermarket fight that he had with Austin, and I definitely don't like the whole King Booker angle. And with that being said, I don't think it comes as any surprise that I personally don't feel like his 126 day title reign with the World Championship as King Booker would happen if there was just one world title belt back in 2006. Especially considering that this was the exact same title that he couldn't take off of Triple H back at WrestleMania 19. Even though we all know should have. For me, this just shows how little faith WWE had in Booker T as a world champion. And while later WCW was known for making a lot of mistakes, I don't think putting the gold around the waist of Booker T was one of them, as I think that's one of the things that they actually did right. Furthermore, when we go to WWE's other world championship at the time, we'll see that it was dominated by Edge and John Cena. And I'm pretty sure that Vince McMahon isn't choosing Booker over the two of them, even if I would have. Now, having said that, I think it should be clear that I'm not trying to remark on any of these wrestlers in terms of their skill levels or am I trying to disparage them necessarily and say that they're not world championship material. Allow me to reiterate, this is just a list of who I think WWE wouldn't pick, not necessarily who I wouldn't pick. And furthermore, What are you I stupid? Booker T is the five time WCW champion, sucker. And again, this is about WWE world champions. I'm quite aware that a lot of these wrestlers on this list have won world titles elsewhere. Okay, so here's one that I don't think anyone's gonna argue with. After Kurt Angle decided to go to TNA, it seemed like WWE had trouble getting over their ex, as they found someone that they tried to get to dress up in their clothes, including a championship belt. Not only did they give Swagger the ankle luck, but they also gave him the all-American gimmick. But alas, WWE learned the best way to get over their ex was to just move on. And with that, so did Swagger's hopes of being a WWE champion. Now his one run almost lasted three months, so that is nothing to scoff at, but but it's not exactly impressive either. And while it did look like he might have gotten another run with the belt at WrestleMania 29, let's remember that's when John Cena and The Rock went at it, and of course he had certain behind the scenes trouble that, um, well let's just say isn't exactly befitting of a world champion. Now, if it wasn't for that certain incident, maybe Jack Swagger would have won the world title at WrestleMania 29. How could you put Booker T at number 10? Are you saying Jack Swagger is more important? No, this isn't a ranked list. It's just 10 picks and I'm doing them in random order. Well, why don't you do rankings? Everyone else does. I don't do rankings because I'm tired of people complaining about how I rank things down in the comments section. Kind of like how you two are doing. Anyway, as we're talking about WrestleMania 29, how about we talk about the night after? Yeah, alright, so this one stinks, but let's be real here. Dolph Ziggler's first run with the World Championship was just handed to him by Vicky Guerrero, which automatically isn't off to the best start. But of course, his real world title run happened when he cashed in his Money in the Bank briefcase, even though he would wind up just dropping the championship right back to Alberto Del Rio the following June. Now, of course, seeing that he did win the championship twice, there is the outside possibility that maybe they would have taken a chance on him anyway. But personally, looking at how long he's been 
not in the world title picture, I say more than likely if there was only one title, the show off would never get to show the world. Especially since at this time the other champion was, big shocker, John Cena. Is anyone beginning to pick up on a pattern here? And no, this definitely won't be the last time I have to mention Big Fight John. Big Fight John? It's supposed to be Big Match John. Don't you know anything? I thought you knew wrestling. It used to be Big Fight John until WWE decided that they didn't like the word fight. Now would you please stop interrupting? Ugh, okay, so I don't think anyone would be complaining if this never happened. The Great Khali was world champion from July 17th, 2007 till September 16th of that same year, having won it in a battle royal for the vacated title on an episode of SmackDown. Now, of course, some might make the argument that the reason why WWE did this would be the same that they would try again with Jinder Mahal 10 years later, and that's trying to cater to the Indian market, as Great Khali is quite popular over there. However, just like with Jinder Mahal, the strategy really doesn't work. Work. But for some reason, WWE just can't seem to learn this lesson. But furthermore, I think of this as more of an experiment, one that they probably wouldn't try if they only had one world title belt. Especially since, keep in mind, the WWE Championship at that time was held by, of course, John Cena. So naturally, if they have to pick between the two, I'm pretty sure the Doctor of Thugonomics is going to be the one holding the gold. How dare you! Jinder's title run was great! I loved it! Whether you liked it or not isn't the point. The point of the matter is, it wasn't financially successful because if it was, they wouldn't have had to cancel their second India show because not enough people were buying tickets. And also, if this strategy was so effective, then they wouldn't have had to put the title on gender in the first place because it should have worked the first time around with the Great Khali. But alas, WWE just has to do things the hard way. Oh, like how you created us head voices in order to dissuade people from making stupid comments only to learn that they'll do it anyway, yet you still use us. Yeah, fine. Okay, you got me there. Anyway, let's just get into the next entry. Going back to 2011 and the show Night of Champions, this was the first time that the WWE World Championship would be unbranded since the brand split, and the person that ushered in the world title would be none other than Mark Henry. And as for the WWE title, yes, it was John Cena yet again, also winning the title on this same night. But as much as the world's strongest man is a veteran of the industry and has been wrestling for years, I still don't think WWE would be giving Big Mark the title, as this really seemed like a pity win, something that they were giving him for services rendered. But at this point, with the championship being unbranded, a lot of people started viewing it as the new Intercontinental title, even though the real Intercontinental title was still there, and instead started treating the World Championship as just a glorified mid-carter belt. And I know not everyone considered the World title as such back then, but did you look at it as a glorified mid-carter belt? Let me know down in the comments. Okay, here's another one that really is going to leave a mark, and that's Rob Van Dam. While Mr. PPV's Money in the Bank cashing at One Night Stand 2 over John Cena was historic and all part of relaunching ECW, you have to remember this is about if WWE only had one world title. It's not just about Raw and SmackDown. And so, with ECW being the third brand, in this scenario, this means that either ECW wouldn't be relaunched, or if they were, they wouldn't have a world championship. And so while Rob Van Dam did win the WWE title itself, this was only done as a part of relaunching things to the extreme. And so if Vince McMahon was forced into a situation where he's only allowed to have one world champion, I don't think ECW gets relaunched. And even if it does, I don't think Rob Van Dam gets the gold, especially considering his reputation for elevating mid-card championships to a higher level. Although don't get me wrong, I've always felt that RVD is, was, and always will be world champion championship material. Okay, so this one's kind of the most negotiable on this list, as he's not only won the World Championship, but he's also held the WWE title on three separate occasions. And he did it by defeating not one, but two of WWE's Golden Boys, defeating John Cena twice and Roman Reigns once. However, the latter of which is the only one that happened after the title unification, with his corresponding champions for his other title reigns being Rey Mysterio, The Phenom, and CM Punk. Now, I think WWE would opt for all three of 
him over that of the Celtic Warrior. And while some might make the argument that he has a better chance of winning it than Rey Mysterio does, need I remind you that Rey is an amazing merchandise seller, something that WWE likes to take into consideration, at least most of the time. Alright, so as I said, Sheamus is up for debate, as is every entry on this list because there's no way of knowing for sure and I just think this is a fun discussion. And obviously, there's no way to be 100% certain whether or not somebody would win a world title in an alternate timeline where there's just one belt, unless we can look into alternate dimensions or something. Oh, um, how many world titles does WWE have in your reality? Just one? Okay, um, did Dolph Ziggler ever win it there? No, I didn't think so. Okay. All right, so here's another one that I wish wasn't so, but I have to say I'm pretty sure if there was just one world title in WWE, I feel like Captain Charisma wouldn't get to hold it as much as he deserves to. While Christian more than proved himself in TNA, for some reason WWE always seemed to favor Edge instead. And as a result of Edge retiring, it seems like they decided to give Christian the world title, but not for very long. He would first win the championship at Extreme Rules 2011, 11. He would only get to hold on to it for two days before dropping it to Randy Orton. However, he would regain it that July at the Money in the Bank pay-per-view, only to drop it right back to Randy Orton yet again at SummerSlam. And of course, not shocking, at that same Extreme Rules, John Cena would become the WWE Champion. He would lose it at that year's Money in the Bank to CM Punk, which was most certainly the title win that overshadowed that of Christians. And with that whole storyline clearly being the major focal point of WWE at the time, I'm not too sure Christians peeps would get their way if the scenario was to play out. Okay, so here's one that I don't think many people are going to be all too upset about. John Bradshaw Layfield, JBL, would end up winning the world title off of Eddie Guerrero, which of course catapulted him into being major heel numero uno, at least as far as the blue brand is concerned. From there, he would be used at WrestleMania to put over John Cena and give him his first world championship. Now, of course, the franchise's journey was going to start around here anyway. It might have been slightly delayed in favor of Batista taking the belt off of Triple H, but nevertheless, I'm pretty sure that John John Cena was going to wind up being a world champion sooner or later, especially considering how many times I've mentioned him already. But as for who he would take it off of, I'm not too sure it would be the former APA member, as I figure it'd be more likely to be Triple H or maybe even Randy Orton. Now, of course, there are some who say that Bradshaw was rewarded with a world title as a result of him helping out WWE and a lot of the members of the locker room financially. And sure, maybe he'd be given a world championship anyway. And while that is a possibility, I just kind of doubt it. All right, and now this one is a two-for-one special. As historic as the moment when we saw Eddie Guerrero and Chris Benoit celebrating at the end of WrestleMania 20, obviously enough, this picturesque scene isn't going to happen if there was just one World Championship title belt. And also, WWE has been doing a pretty good job of retconning this moment as it is. But now, this leaves the question, which one out of these two wouldn't be World Champion if there was just one belt to hold? Well, I'm not exactly sure, but I guarantee that at least one of them would be the odd man out. And furthermore, I might even say there's the possibility that both of them might not ever get to have been world champion, as perhaps WWE might avoid experimentation if they only had one title to gamble with. But who knows, all I can say is that this image with both men holding two world championship belts wouldn't happen if there was just one. Well there you go, 10 wrestlers that I don't think would have won a world title if there was just one belt, but who are some that you can think of and how do you feel about these entries, let me know down in the comments. And yet again, please make sure that you're subscribed to this channel. And and consider signing up on my Patreon page. Speaking of which, thank you to all my Patreon supporters, and thank you for watching. And as always, Dave knows.